Hello, Magic Casters of all shapes and sizes. My name is Chance. Welcome to my spellbook, and thank you so much for tuning into the fourth episode of our third level spell series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of my all time favorite spells, a favorite amongst necromancy users as well, and by DMs alike. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Bestow Curse. This spell is usable by the Bard, Cleric, and the Wizard, and it is found in the good old Player's Handbook. Honestly, I'm a little bit worried about the repercussions for this video, just because I feel like a lot of DMs are going to kind of use this as a punishment. Eh, you can if you want, I guess, but I'd probably recommend against it. I'll get into that a little bit later. But before I do, let's take a quick look at the mechanics here so we can kind of discuss it a little bit. So the effect at a glance is as followed. On a failed save, a creature can be affected in one of the following ways. Disadvantage on checks and save regarding a chosen stat. Disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Force a target to make a wisdom save at the start of each turn, and on a fail, they waste their action, and you can deal an extra one night necrotic damage to the target. So you can only pick one of those, you don't get all of them, if you did I would consider the spell outrageously broken, but you get to pick one of those. Pretty good, honestly, I think a lot of them are situational, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But the cast time is one action, the range is touch, which is really interesting. Now the duration is one minute, and it is a concentration spell, at least kinda sorta, we'll talk about that in a bit here. The save is wisdom, and the upcasting is really unique. So if you cast it using the spell slot of 4th level, it becomes a 10 minute duration and it's still concentration. However, at 5th level, it's 8 hours and you drop that concentration, which is pretty cool because it, it, it's very interesting. At 7th level, it's 24 hours with no concentration and at 9th level, it is until dispelled. Isn't that hilarious? Man, that is awesome. Just awesome. Uh, the components are verbal and somatic and the school is necromancy, which makes sense. Now let's take a quick look at the full description here so we can better understand exactly what's going on. You touch a creature, and that creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become cursed for the duration of this spell. When you cast this spell, choose the nature of the curse from the following options. Choose one ability score. Well cursed, the target has disadvantage on ability checks and saving throws made with that ability score. While cursed, the target has disadvantage on attack rolls against you. While cursed, the target must make a wisdom saving throw at the start of each of its turns. If it fails, it wastes its action doing nothing. While the target is cursed, your attacks and spells deal an extra 1 day 8 necrotic damage to the target. A remove curse spell ends the effect. At the DM's option, you may choose an alternative curse effect, but it should be no more powerful than those described above. The DM has final say on such a curse's effect. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of 4th level or higher, the duration is concentration up to 10 minutes. If you use a spell slot of 5th level or higher, the duration is 8 hours. If you use a spell slot of 7th level or higher, the duration is 24 hours. If you use a 9th level spell slot, the spell lasts until it is dispelled. Using in a spell slot of 5th level or higher grants a duration that doesn't require concentration. My goodness, it is a wordy one, but it is hella cool regardless. Um, needless to say, it's pretty apparent why a lot of people pick it. It's just good. The fact that it's a spell that can do multiple different things and that has such a potent upcast make it very desirable for virtually every class that has access to it, uh, with a couple exceptions based on playstyle here and there. Uh, now something I would like to point out that I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about is how DMs use this spell. So a great way to use it as a DM is to have the BBEG's familiar cast it. Since it's a touch spell, it can be cast through familiars fairly consequence free. So if you have, let's say, the biggest damage dealer or someone who kind of 
did so a lot of DMs use this as punishment and so I'll give you an example let's say you're in a curse of Strahd campaign and Strahd appears and the bard just starts insulting him and insulting him and insulting him uh, Strahd will send a spider to him in the middle of the night um, hit him with a bestow curse and make it so all of his uh, checks and saves regarding charisma for example are now made with disadvantage and it's until dispelled because you know Strahd kind of runs the show in that particular campaign so I think that's how I've seen it most commonly used at least by DMs but player characters can do the same kind of thing the find familiar spell combos with this unbelievably well especially if you pick like a less conspicuous familiar like a spider for example that's probably the best one to use but it's pretty neat pretty good stuff um, something else I'd like to quickly point out here you can have a additional effects other than the one stated it is worth having that conversation with your dm um, you can try and reflavor some of these as well um, for example the, instead of having disadvantage on attack rolls against you they have disadvantage against attack rolls on uh, one particular member of your party for example I think that'd be pretty fair or even reverse it where you have advantage on attack rolls against them as opposed to them having disadvantage against you. I think it is worth having that conversation but once again take that with a grain of salt. Individual DMs might want to play it individual ways. That being said let's take a quick look at some alternative uses here. So the best way that I've personally or the most common way for sure I've seen it used is when it comes to punching up um, this usually happens in BBEG fights or in boss fights in one form or fashion and it's very effective because this spell doesn't just set you up to be in a good position but it can set your party members up as well for example make them have disadvantage or choose the stat dexterity and just bombard them with fireballs for example is a kind of a good way to do it like be be mindful of what the rest of your party can do at the same time um, and it combos are really well with spells like eldritch blast that deals separate attack rolls you deal an extra one to eight per each attack right so it can add up pretty dang quick that being said, be sure not to abuse it or the DM might get a little bit upset. Um, another great way to use this is to use it in competitions. That disadvantage on ability checks is super great if you're in a sporting competition of really any shape or kind. And another great way to use this is to help balance out the encounters better. Uh, this is especially relevant towards the wisdom save at the start of each turn and if they fail it, they waste their action. Action economy, very much a thing in 5e. It's been a thing in virtually every edition that I can think of, but uh, in 5e it's especially important. So if you can get them to waste an action just because, that's basically the equivalent of most NPCs wasting their entire turn. Um, not a lot of NPCs actually have a strong use for their bonus action, especially towards the earlier levels, but that being said, your DM might make homebrew a lot of stuff to make sure that's not a huge issue, but who knows? Um, ultimately, if you have any alternative uses, concepts, questions, concerns, please let me know down beneath in the comment section. Also, let me know what curses you would like to pitch to your DM. Try and make sure they're balanced enough where it's still playable. I think something involving movement would be kind of cool, like target can only move at half of their normal speed. That'd be a cool kind of curse. Um, but let me know what you think down beneath in the comment section. As always, I really do appreciate it. Um, also, if you like that cool hand-drawn picture of Sips and you'd like your own hand-drawn D&D picture, please check out the guild hall to figure out exactly how to do that. I hope you guys all have a great day and as always, happy casting.